This is Pay Try TV, and I'm Kinito Hanson. We've got something very special for you, and my partner, Dan Casillo, is here to introduce our special guests. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Well, these three guys on screen are a very special uh, type of, have a very special type of brotherhood. They all play for the De La Salle University in different sports. We're going to go talk to them. Michael, Ben, and Isaiah Phillips. Welcome to Play Right TV, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. <laughs> nice. You know, I want to start off with Ben. Okay, when I first heard that you were playing for the La Salle basketball and volleyball varsity team, I said, what? Is, it, is that even possible? That's crazy. So how is it going for you? How do you manage and... Wow, where do you get the energy to do all that, to do both sports? <laughs> oh, well, uh, well, it's 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 been something that I've been doing for for a while. Cause I know high school um, mm -hmm. I, I played basketball, muna tapos tapos volleyball. Cause I sabi dani tataiko. Volleyball is a good cross training for basketball, and and I keep saying that in all of all of these different conversations because the 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 trainings. Are, are so complimentary and uh, so that's oh, been something that I've been doing for, for years and it's really been nice to you know to, to work on different aspects of your of your game have different roles in different sports and uh, join different teams so it, it's really really fun it's really demanding um, it, it takes a lot of, of dedication and discipline um, but that's something that our parents raise us with and that I'm used to growing up so uh, I just really really love the the ability that that LaSalle has given me here to, to play both sports and I'm forever grateful uh, for that opportunity. No, I, I was just I wanted to do a quick follow up. Which do you prefer, basketball or volleyball, or do you equally enjoy them? Um, I I would say I equally enjoy them. It, it depends on the season. It depends on <laughs> it depends on um, you know kind of where we're at in 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 this in the state of the year. Because after a, a very long and demanding basketball season, especially having two UAP seasons back to back, um, sometimes it's good to kind of just shift over to volleyball and, and kind of just refresh and and have a, a, a different look on on your on your sports life. But then now, while I'm doing volleyball, I, I also miss doing basketball too. So it it, it always is. Uh, is a back and forth. So I really love playing both of them. Um, but volleyball is just extremely fun. It's it's, it's rapid pace, um, a lot of camaraderie inside the court. So I really do love volleyball as well. Ben, let's talk about your UAAP eligibility. So you've done two seasons with the La Salle uh, basketball team, and you're doing one season now with a volleyball team. How many more years do you have playing basketball and playing volleyball? So this is season 85 now. Um, I will have one more season, season 86, uh, for basketball eligibility in the first half of the of the term and then the second half for volleyball. So I have one more basketball season, uh, which is my last season, my last two raw here, and then one more volleyball season um, after that basketball season because they're in, they're in two different terms. Okay. Let's move over to Michael now. Michael, you've also played two seasons with the LaSalle Green Archers for basketball. And uh, LaSalle just coming off a victory in the Aral ng Dabao Invitationals. And LaSalle beat uh, a PBA reinforced team called Blanca's Golden Knights. LaSalle beat Lyceum. LaSalle beat uh, FEU. And in the championship game, uh, LaSalle beat Adamson. Um, how are the preparations coming along for the coming season in September? Michael. Mm. Yes, sir. Well, uh, thank you. Just like you said, uh, those are some very great teams that we face. It's very grateful that we were able to go in and, and play and compete against those teams. Actually, nung, uh, nung nandito pa kami, lagi ko nakita yung aro ng gabaw, uh, mga trophies dito sa kitchen from the previous years. I think it was the 82nd, 81st. And so I always wanted to go to Davao and, and really experience everything, you know, and just, just uh, tournaments like that. We were going out of Manila, even just going out that really helps uh, everyone kind of just come together and, and kind of, you know, figure out how to how to do your best against those great teams. You know, LPU is a great team. Uh, of course, Team Block, uh, Adamson. And so it was really a great experience. We ate a lot of pomelo, a lot of durian. <laughs> and so, uh, I mean, it's great. It's, it's, it's a great, you know, start uh, to our preparations this offseason. And uh, I'm very uh, excited, you know, what's coming forward as well. Yeah, well, it's nice that you're speaking Tagalog. Your mom is, of course, Filipina, Dr. Sharon Phillips. Uh -huh. It's nice that you guys are learning the language. Michael, I wanted to ask you, you were the first to come out. How How is it having your brother, Ben, on the team? And then, you know, later we're going to talk to Isaiah, who's also going to be with De La Salle. So you're going to be three brothers in one 
college. Oh, oh. oh pero masaya po ako kasi parang um, kahit sa states, parang naramdaman ko na laging nasa likod itong dalawas. Uh, they're always behind my back no matter what. And now that they're kind of in person, naramdaman mo pa yung, ano, yung pag-ibig nila and yung care nila sa akin. And so, ako yung bunso po. So, uh, I've always kind of looked up to these two. And so, it's, it's, it's been a blessing, you know, how God has kind of uh, made this happen for us and kind of gave us this opportunity to, to be together. And so, um, I know we don't have to make uh, as many phone calls and, and, and uh, FaceTime calls now that we're on the same time zone. So, uh, it's, it's just a great experience. <laughs> yeah, now that they're all together. But let's now talk to Isaiah. This is the first time Isaiah is coming out in media in the Philippines. He's here for a few days to get his immigration papers uh, arranged. And then he goes back to the U.S. in a few days. And he'll be graduated from college there. And then from college, um, he'll be back in the Philippines for good to take up his master's at La Salle starting in May. And in terms of the age order, it's Ben who's the oldest. Then it's Isaiah, and then the Bunso is Michael. Now let's talk to Isaiah. Isaiah, you look like you've got a pretty wide body. Yeah. Wider, than, wider than Ben and Michael combined. Yes. Okay, we know that you've got a boxing background, but you did play basketball in college. How is that going to affect your ability to fit into the basketball system uh, in the UAEP, Isaiah? Oh, well, well, I've still been training in the States, trying to keep my body in shape more, you know, getting stronger, getting faster, um, working on the fundamentals of basketball and just working hard every day. Um, when I come here, you know, I just hope to, you know, try and get on the team and do whatever coach um, tells me to do and help Ben and Mike, you know, and the whole team in general, um, you know, make strides and make everybody better. So, I've just been staying in shape, eating right, um, getting a lot of rest, and then just, you know, just trying to practice my skills every day, whatever I can do to help the team this upcoming season win more basketball games is my main focus. Yeah, well, LaSalle was out of the semifinals in the last season. Isaiah, with your size and grit and the energy of the three Phillips, do you think you guys can uh, come back, win a championship? You know, yes, we certainly hope so. <laughs> yes, Uncle, we certainly hope so. You know, that's, that's the goal. Um, like I said before, whatever I can do to help the team bring more energy, you know, get more rebounds, play more uh, defense, and just help secure more games. I know we have a really good um, team. It's a very talented team, um, mm -hmm. very talented coaches this season. And I just hope that I can help capitalize on that and make everybody better. Isaiah, what about your playing role? We all know about Ben. He uh, can hit the three. He's played four. Sometimes shifts over to three, depending on the matchups. You've got Michael who plays five. What about your own position? What what position are you most comfortable playing in? The five or four position. I feel like with my size and my energy, you know, I can go up against you know those bigger guys to free up being a mic to help spread the floor and other teammates. You know, doing a lot of dirty work, going under there. You know, kind of being the bruiser of the team, getting real physical down low. I feel like will help spread the floor out and allow me to kind of go up against those bigger guys and take some of that heat off the team. Yeah, so I say I'm sure you uh, talk you talk to your brothers a lot about how it's how it goes in the sal. Have you seen them practice? Have you been able to join any of the practices? And how would you compare it to basketball in the U.S.? I've seen a couple practices. This today will be my first practice, live practice for De La Salle. Oh, um, nice watching and just talking to Ben and Mike every day. It's a different, it's a different type of game than in the States. It's a lot more physical. You know, you can use your body a lot more, a little bit more faster pace. So, you know, I hope to adjust to that style, but it's, you know, very different from the States. Um, so hopefully with practice and, you know, getting more um, practicing, I can kind of adjust to the Filipino way of playing basketball. <laughs> Well, Michael, let's talk about some roster changes now for LaSalle. We know that LaSalle has a new coach, Topex Robinson, and uh, there's a tradition that's been introduced by Coach Topex with LaSalle. I see that uh, before a practice or before a game, you guys are um, get together like in a circle, holding hands before and after a practice, before and after a game. I think we have a picture to show that. 
Uh, That's a picture uh, taken from the Arao ng Dapao. And you're number 40. You're over there. What is it exactly um, Coach Topex had in mind to introduce this new ritual? And what do you guys say when you're all together in this circle? Michael. Absolutely. That's a great question because uh, that circle is, is really, really uh, what Coach Topex really prides uh, the, the team around. It's really representative of uh, what he's trying to accomplish with our team. And that's really, you know, bringing the joy, the fulfillment, and, and really just bringing everybody together. And so um, the biggest thing he, he really loves to remind us is that, you know, this is an opportunity, you know, God has given us talent and it, it's up to us to kind of stay together. And so when we do this circle before practice, after practice, we all get, get together and hold hands, which was kind of weird at first, but then after the first and second time, you know, of course, uh, we all we all love it now. And so, uh, we get together, we thank the Lord, we thank the Lord for our, our health, our families, and, and we just ask for his strength and, and you know, his, his spirit to kind of guide us each and every day. And so um, we take turns, every single person will will pray based on their number. And so we just go around and then, you know, we, we, we thank the Lord and, and really just kind of always ground ourselves in, 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 in that. Well, That's, again, just a follow-up question. Follow-up question, Michael. Um, I asked about the roster changes. Some key additions to the team this coming season for LaSalle. Josh David um, should have actually been playing a few seasons back, but was hampered by an injury. But now he's back. He's going to be playing in his first year for LaSalle. Jonel Policarpio, um, a, certainly a blue-chip rookie. DJ Mitchell. We know that he's back in the U.S. He's got a back issue, but I think that's going to be uh, uh, addressed. Um, so with those three additions, plus a few more, what do you think LaSalle's chemistry is going to be like this coming season? Mm. Oh, Paul, yes, sir. Uh, well, first, I just want to start with uh, Joshua David. I mean, he's really been just just a hard worker ever since, you know, it's an unfortunate injury. He's really used that to kind of just rally, rally the team. And we all really look up to him, especially me. You know, uh, he, he kind of really is, is that guy we, we look up to. He's really solid. And, and seeing him play for the first time, his first game back uh, 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 last year was, was really, really, really just uh, eye-opening and heartwarming. So guys like Paulie, guys like DJ Mitchell, they, they I mean, Paulie kind of speaks for himself with, with his play. I mean, he's, he's a rookie, but he, he plays, you know, uh, like a veteran. And so um, I just love his heart. All three of those guys have just amazing heart. And, and I think, that is really what Coach Topex, you know, wants in his players, just that effort, that that will to win and really the will just to stay together as a team. And and those those guys are, are really uh, excited to, to bring that this year. Ben, I read that uh, you had said that it would be a for the three brothers to come together and oh, play well. the team. It looks like it's going to happen. Um, talk to us about that. And also, uh, well, the one of the reasons that you that your family decided on De La Salle was because of uh, the, your faith. So, and I see that you have, you know, your your book is inspired by Genesis, uh, by the verse in the Bible, Genesis chapter 40, 49. So tell us about yeah, that. Absolutely. Uh, well, Genesis 49, 27 states that, uh, that Benjamin is a ravenous wolf. In the morning, he devours the prey. In the evening, he divides the spoil. Um, so that's actually the verse that I that I live by every day. And, and for me personally, it's just about getting up and, and doing all of the things that I have to do, all the hard work, all of the things that, you know, I, I need to do to, to provide for my family and take care of, of my family and then share, you know, that uh, that that wealth, and prosperity, uh, you know, and the Lord's blessings with everybody else. You know, that's that's within my circle. So that's that's really the quote in, in the scripture that guides me every day, um, you know, growing up. In a very Christian household, all three of us are our father, uh, Benjamin Phillips Jr. Um, you know, he's he's a pastor, so you know, every Sunday we would have uh, Bible study and Sunday school. You know, as, as children, we would always make sure that that was you know our key grounding point, our, our faith, our rock as a family, uh, which has helped us you know throughout all of these years and all of these trials and tribulations. Um, so, so for us, especially with, with my mother, our faith is extremely important, and that's what we feel like led us here. And so for the you know, for the, the values that LaSalle shares for faith, service and communion, you know, those just, just spoke to us, you know, during all of the recruiting processes, especially with Michael. Um, you know, we felt that it was divine intervention from the Lord that, that we ended up here at LaSalle. So, you know, we, we thank the Lord every day that we were able to, to make that journey. Um, absolutely. 
not so nice. And about like, so like you said, you, you felt that um, God brought Michael here and then you were just tagged along in the recruiting, I heard, and then now your your brother coming. I mean, that's that's so crazy. It must that's so crazy good for the three of you since you seem to really all get along. You're staying in the same dorm. Oh, well, uh, ever since uh, it's, it's a lot better now, actually, <laughs> because ever since we were we were kids, we would always you know play together in the backyard. And so um, you know, obviously with with Mike being a boom so and uh, you know his two older brothers, we would pick on him a lot in the backyard and really rough him up. And, and now you know he's he's grown to be the the monster you know dominator basketball player that he is. And so I think that having that that three you know the nothing can break the three strands, nothing can break the three cords. Um, so having three brothers here, you know, we all have our strengths and our weaknesses and we all protect each other. Um, we all have, you know, a side that we can look out so you can never penetrate, you know, a, a triangle. And so for us, that that's really been a, a key facet from our father, from our mother. So I'm just, I mean, I'm happy every day now waking up and seeing my two brothers here. It's a dream come true. Not so, not so nice. Well, Isaiah, let's talk about your Filipino roots. Um, tell us about your mother's, uh, Filipino heritage and uh, the Filipino values that you grew up with and um, yeah and, and how many are you in the family is there another brother um, <laughs> that is, to, to seeing wearing a LaSalle shirt or do you have a sister tell us about your family tell us about your Filipino roots Isaiah yes well to assure you this is this is all the son she's had so. <laughs> but, um, um, yeah so um, my mother was born in Cebu and you know um, her her mom was Filipino, and and what she's taught us growing up is that family is always the most important, and the food and we was always raised around food and family. Food and, so, <laughs> food, and family, food and family, yes, ma'am, food and family. And so you know, very Christian home, and you know, we just my mother doesn't speak the language, but she's learning. But um, her mother died when she was um, younger, so you know, it was kind of difficult. You know, trying to grasp the um, the real roots at a young age because of my mother, her her grand, her mother died at a very young age. But having been here and experiencing more of the culture and stuff, we are very well immersed and learning every day. And even me, I need to start speaking more Tagalog. I'm getting the tutor and everything, so I'll be able to speak more Tagalog. Um, but yeah, food and culture and having a big family, you know, um, get together and 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 talk about, you know, humbleness and always loving the neighbor and everything and, you know, just having a good time. Isaiah, no sister? <laughs> no sister. No sister. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, okay. So tell us, uh, your your mother is half Filipina and um, so her, her father, your grandfather was an American and mm -hmm. so her mother and your grandfather met in Cebu and that's where they got married? Is that how, how it was? Yes, uh, yes. yes. Uh, my, our grandfather, uh, he was actually in the Peace Corps and uh, he, was, oh. he was also a teacher and educator as well. And so that's that's another uh, route that we kind of get that that background from. And so that's that's what started all of our, you know, our, our Fili uh, Filipino, you know, family tree. And so uh, that's, our, that's our grandpa there on my mom's yeah, side. Right. And we also know that your mother is a practicing psychologist. She has a doctorate in psychology. And, um, you know, I think uh, with that background and her Filipino roots, yeah, uh, yeah I think uh, it, it's great that all, all three of you are, uh, are together, thinking one way and playing one way, as they say, the family that plays together stays together, right, Dan? <laughs> yes, yes. I love that. And they seem to be very obedient boys, too. Very impressive. <laughs> Very impressive. But I wanted to uh, ask you to talk about your dad, uh, Pastor mm. Benjamin Phillips, right? He was a, he played college basketball, NCAA, and then he played professional basketball in Europe. So I guess he was the one who influenced you guys to get into sports, although I see that your mother was also a volleyball player and a cheerleader. So how did the sports uh, part of your family get introduced to you guys? Yes, uh, since nung bata pa kami po, uh, we were taught, you know, uh, basketball. But I, I believe the biggest uh, thing that our father did uh, for us, he's, he used basketball as kind of a window, a kind of a, a way to kind of teach us a lot of the values that young men, you know, should have and, and should, oh. should carry. And so we learned a lot of our life lessons through basketball, whether it's, in, you know, in practice, in the game, you know, in 
and character development, you know, being, you know, just kind of using basketball as a way to, to kind of bond together and really just bond us uh, in Christ and, and sort of never forget that, you know, that it's, it's not by our talent, by our hard work uh, that uh, we are able to, to be here. It's actually, you know, through our God given talents so of giving God the glory. And so, um, I really love how he kind of used that to kind of teach us a lot of the things that we we, we try to uh, work on every single day. And so and so um, just using basketball is, is something that, you know, we all bonded together. Even, you know, our grandpa, our Lolo, on our, our uh, father's side, uh, he was a coach. You know, he 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 uh, played also. And so it really runs in the family. And so and my father used that to really, you know, teach us the values, everything. Awesome. Nice, great parents you have. You guys have. Is he yeah. still up now? Yes, uh, he. You know, obviously now we we we're not there to do the Sunday school every day. You know, in in the living room. But you know, actually that's why we still have a lot of Zoom calls here. We still have a lot of Viber calls. So you know, he always still imparts. You know the. The, the, the wisdom of the of the Lord into us every single day, you know, especially sometimes now that we're super far away, we, we really need that. Um, him, and, him and my mom are fantastic about keeping us, you know, really, really in line and making sure that, uh, you know, we, we stay grounded. And that's why we're forever thankful. Having somebody who's done, you know, an international basketball state and who's lived a lot of life on my dad's side and having a, a psychologist and, and a doctorate and my mother on that side, you know, it just makes for a really, really good mix. And so that's why, uh, everything that we do here is really just to honor our mother and father because they sacrificed a lot for us to get here. Well, it's great to see the band of brothers getting together, playing basketball together. And, uh, you know, before we wind up the, our show, can we ask each and every one of you to just tell us a little bit about the expectations that everyone may have uh, on the LaSalle team and how Topex Robinson has managed to put together this team looking forward to the coming UAP season. Let's start off with Ben. Mm. Well, I, I think, um, you know, I'm I'm not shy in saying that the expectations, obviously, anytime you put on a LaSalle jersey is to bring home a championship back to Taft. You know, that's, that's the expectation of, of the players, of the coaching staff, of the community. And so we need to work hard every single day um, to, to really get us back to that point. Um, especially with all of these preseason tournaments, we need to know that they are for development, they are for chemistry, they are for cohesion. And so while we want to win as much as we can, we know that the real goal is that UAP championship come December. Um, so I think that Coach Topex has done a phenomenal job in these beginning months. We still have a long way to go in this journey with Coach. Um, but now that we're actually understanding his system, understanding the players, building on individual talents and still meshing, you know, a, a cohesive team. And so, you know, we, we still have a long way to go, but we're on the right track. Michael? Yes, sir. Uh, um, I believe that Coach Topex and, and the team and everyone, we really grounded on love, service, care. And so whether that comes in, in these games that we're playing, the practices and, and school sessions, I believe the Southern community can really expect a, a team that's really grounded on the values. That's something that we want to really see. Uh, you want, we want you guys to see in us as we play every single game, what it really means to be a Lasallian, what it really means to, to fight for the, the school, fight for the green and white. And so we're going to try our very best to go out there and represent the school both on and off the court. And I just hope that, you know, you guys will, will be uh, with us every single step of the way. And we really need you guys this year. And Isaiah? Yes, obviously the expectation for everybody is to win a championship. But I would like to add something um, that Coach Topex instills in everybody. And that's a student athlete for a student who comes first. Mm -hmm. So it's our job and it's our, you know, role to show the community and LaSalle that, Taking care of your education is just as important as bringing home a championship. And I feel like Coach Topex really implements that in the team, make sure that we're getting our lesson and making sure we're taking our grades so we can set an example to represent the school and the education program just as well as the basketball program. I know we have a lot of work in the basketball uh, program. We need to work hard every day in practice. We need to love and care for each other and, and do this as a team, not as individuals. But we need to also bring that energy into the classroom too. And remind everybody every day that we're students first and we need to also be taking care of our education just as equally as the basketball. Oh, wonderful insights. Uh, just just a matter of perspective. Um, ben, you've got one more year left for basketball eligibility. Um, yes. And for for Michael, you've got three three more years, right? Oh, well, yes. Okay. And then for Isaiah, how many years of eligibility do you have? Two? Uh, three years, Paul. Three years. Okay. Well, that sets a perspective. Well, Diane, 
What a wonderful yeah. conversation with these band of brothers. Yeah, the, <laughs> the Phillips Power. Phillips Power for De La Salle. Animo. Oh, <laughs> Animo. <laughs> I don't know if yeah, that's for probably not time huh? college basketball can eat us three brothers. Yeah. One. I don't know if we've ever if we've, we've ever had uh, uh, a trio of brothers playing for one team in the in the UAP or or even in the PBA. But uh you know this is going to be a record and uh, <laughs> let's see how far you guys can take La Salle in this uh coming UAP season and uh, for Ben best of luck to you in your volleyball uh, stint with the archers and best of luck to the band of brothers playing for the La Salle Green Archers. Well, thanks very much, guys, for gracing our show. And always a, a pleasure to talk with you. And uh, it's so nice how you've immersed yourselves in the Filipino culture, talking the language like Filipinos, um, and uh, you know, being exemplary Filipino American student athletes. Thanks yeah. very much, guys, for your time. Love your faith. Keep going, guys. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, guys. All right, Diane. Well, something very different, something very unique. Three brothers talking the same language, yeah. feeling the same way, and uh, and the faith, the faith that they exude. It's yeah. just uh, it's just very inspiring. Yeah, super. I mean, I love talking to these guys. What? exemplary examples of what they reminded us all student athletes you know of course when you're an athlete and you get carried away you really want to want to win but yeah the coach topex did a good job there and emphasizing that they also need to exert as much effort in their academics but yeah what a congrats i want to commend them the mom and dad to have having raised such such amazing boys wow that's going to be exciting to watch them on the on the hard court together in Okinito in the next yes, year. It certainly will be. It certainly will be, especially since uh, Ben only has one year left of eligibility. So they're only yeah. going to be playing together as a group for one year. Um, but yeah. then Michael has three more years. And of course, Isaiah will have uh, two more years. Well, that wraps up our uh, episode on the Phillips Brothers. And we hope you enjoy that. And don't forget, like, share, and subscribe to Play It Right TV. We've got uh, the best, we've got the greatest, we've got the latest here on uh, Play It Right TV all the time. And Diane? Yes, please also visit playitright.com. They have lots of sports products, fitness products that you will love. The best brands, great prices, high quality products. Please check them out for you and your whole family. Playitright.com. So until next time, this is Diane Castillejo. Thank you for tuning in to Play It Right TV. Thank you very much. Kenito Hansen here. See you again on Play It Right TV.